Welcome back to the Two-Way Report. Ah, Hunter Biden, son of Brandon, who's arguably one of the most anti-two-way presidents the US has ever had. Yeah, Brandon's son, an unexpected poster boy for gun rights. Hard to believe, eh? This is some juicy news, so stay tuned. You don't want to miss any of this. It seems like the Justice Department's investigation into Hunter's crack-fueled gun purchase might just put him at the forefront of the Second Amendment battle. Who would have thought that crack cocaine and constitutional debates would go hand in hand? It's like watching a wild reality show where the unlikeliest characters team up to challenge gun restrictions. The investigation stems from Hunter's 2018 firearm acquisition, which coincided with his candid admission of crack cocaine use. This presents a double whammy. Federal law prohibits drug users from owning guns, and lying on ATF Form 4473 can lead to serious consequences, up to 15 years behind bars or a hefty $250,000 fine. Ouch. But wait, here's a twist. Enter the Bruin decision, a Supreme Court ruling that shook the gun control landscape. Last year, the court declared a New York law requiring gun-carrying licenses unconstitutional, much to Brandon's dismay. He actually slammed that ruling, saying, quote, I urge states to continue to enact and enforce common-sense laws to make their citizens and communities safer from gun violence. That's what he said, a statement he made last June 23rd, in which he also expressed he was deeply disappointed in the ruling. Ah, poor Brandon. Little did everyone know that this decision could open the floodgates for challenges to gun laws, including those related to drug use. Little did Brandon know, too, that the Bruin ruling he slammed was potentially going to be his son's ticket out of incarceration. Q, Hunter Biden's legal team, who might just use the Bruin ruling as a strategic trump card. One such challenge questions the validity of preventing marijuana enthusiasts from buying firearms. Believe it or not, some state judges have argued that drug addiction or possession doesn't necessarily mean you should be denied your Second Amendment rights. Who knew that being a pothead and a gun owner could be debated in the same sentence? But that's how muddied things in the country have become. If Hunter's legal gambit succeeds, it could potentially bring about some relaxation of gun ownership restrictions. Imagine that. A Biden inadvertently fueling the gun rights movement is like a sitcom plot no one ever saw coming. Rumor has it that Hunter Biden's lawyers have informed the Justice Department officials of their intent to challenge the law under the Second Amendment if their client faces any gun-related charges. Talk about turning a politically charged case into a headline-grabbing showdown over their right to bear arms. Not warn anyone? To make things even juicier, this clash happens while the White House is pushing for stricter gun laws. So now, conservative gun rights advocates, who typically find fault with anything remotely related to the Biden family, find themselves in an awkward alliance with the president's own son. Stranger things have definitely happened, but it's quite the unexpected twist of fate. Federal prosecutors are expected to wrap up the Hunter Biden investigation soon, led by U.S. Attorney David Wise, who was appointed by none other than former President Trump. Attorney General Merrick Garland has made it clear that Weiss won't face any political pressure and has the authority to make the appropriate decisions. It's game on. During the firearm purchase, Hunter Biden filled out a federal form where he supposedly denied being a drug user or addict. Yet, in his memoir, he openly confessed to smoking crack every 15 minutes during that period. Talk about conflicting statements. Either his memory is blurry or he needs a new editor for his autobiography. Hunter Biden's lawyer and the White House spokesperson have taken the safe route by declining to comment, citing the ongoing investigation and Hunter Biden's status as a private citizen. Fair enough. No need to risk adding fuel to the already blazing fire. The Gun Control Act of 1968 is pretty clear. Drug users can't have guns. The ATF firmly believes this applies to those who have used illegal drugs within the previous 12 months of firearm purchase. They take it seriously with penalties that could land you in the slammer for 15 years. Yikes. But here's the catch. This provision, once unquestionably restricting gun ownership, now faces challenges thanks to the Bruin decision, which rocked the foundations of gun control. Contemporary firearm regulations are being tested against the standards of the founding fathers. It's like the Second Amendment is getting a makeover, and not everyone is thrilled about it. Again, Brandon is definitely not a fan, as he did express his deep disappointment with the ruling last year. Despite the Bruin decision, most courts have upheld the ban on drug users having guns, with a few exceptions. 
It's a legal tug of war. Jeff Welty, a professional specializing in gun cases, says there's no consensus, and anyone charged with violating the statute would seriously consider invoking the Second Amendment as their defense. It's like a legal version of rock, paper, scissors. Speaking of exceptions, some judges have thrown their gavels into the ring. A federal district judge in Utah declared the ban on drug users owning guns unconstitutional due to its vagueness. They argued that terms like user needed proper definition and the timing of drug use had to be considered. It's like the law forgot to include a glossary. In Oklahoma, Judge Patrick Wyrick used the Bruin decision to argue against using the statute to prosecute a defendant found with both a gun and marijuana in his car. According to Wyrick, prohibiting marijuana users from having firearms contradicts America's historical tradition of gun regulation. Sorry, Reefer Madness fans, but it looks like Judge Wyrick isn't buying it. But wait, there's more. In Texas, Judge Kathleen Cardone ruled against the ban's constitutionality in a case involving charges against a woman found with marijuana in a psychedelic substance in her home. Judge Cardone believes the ban clashes with the Second Amendment and the early history of gun regulation. The Justice Department has appealed both the Oklahoma and Texas cases, so the drama continues. Of course, not all judges are singing the same tune. Judge Allen Albright in Texas dismissed a Second Amendment challenge to the statute, emphasizing that the Bruin decision only protects law-abiding citizens' gun rights. In other words, not everyone gets a golden ticket to the gun ownership chocolate factory. Mississippi's Judge Louis Garola Jr. joined the chorus of upholding the statute, arguing that disarming individuals considered a risk to society such as felons or alcoholics aligns with the American legal tradition. The defendant in that case has appealed the decision, so the melody keeps playing. Meanwhile, close to Hunter Biden's neck of the woods in Pennsylvania, defendant Eric Harris was charged under the statute and for lying on the federal form during his gun purchase, another offense that carries a max sentence of five years in prison. Although Harris pleaded guilty, he reserved the right to challenge the charge's constitutionality. That appeal is now in the hands of the Third Circuit Court of Appeals, which oversees Delaware as well. Q suspenseful music. The Third Circuit Court of Appeals seems to be playing a waiting game. They're waiting for another major Second Amendment case, Range v. Attorney General, to be resolved before tackling Harris's appeal. This lawsuit specifically challenges the bans on felons possessing firearms. It's like the court has set up a double feature of gun related constitutional drama. So, where do Second Amendment advocates stand on drug users' gun rights? Well, they can't seem to agree. Some believe marijuana users should have their gun rights intact, arguing that the government's evidence doesn't hold up. But as for hard drugs, it's still up for debate. It seems that no one wants to get caught on the wrong side of history. Opponents of the ban like Aiden Johnston from Gun Owners of America firmly stand against drug users being denied their gun rights. They question why we should trust these people in society if we don't trust them with firearms. Fair point. Can't argue with that logic. On the other side of the barrel, Larry Keene from the National Shooting Sports Foundation isn't actively pushing to change the law. It's not even on their radar. They're keeping their powder dry, so to speak. Maybe they're waiting for the right moment to make their move. With all these conflicting rulings, it might be time for the Supreme Court to step in and settle the score. How would they rule? No one knows for sure. Maybe Justice Samuel Alito is ambivalent, torn between supporting gun rights and backing strong law enforcement. It's like a legal cliffhanger, and we're all on the edge of our seats. Andrew Willinger from the Duke Center of Firearms Law doesn't expect the statute to be completely wiped out. He predicts it will hang on in some form or another. It's like a stubborn stain that wouldn't come out, no matter how many times you wash it. So the battle rages on, with Hunter Biden caught in the crossfire. Who knew he would become the poster child for the Second Amendment? It's like the universe has a twisted sense of humor. As the investigation nears its conclusion, the tension rises. Will Hunter Biden's legal tactics succeed, leading to a loosening of gun restrictions? Only time will tell. Stay tuned for the next episode of Hunter Biden vs. Let's Go Brandon. And regrettably, that is all the time we have for today. What do you think is going to happen to Hunter Biden? Is he going to force his old man to become an ally of the Second Amendment? Or will Brandon and the White House remain tight-lipped about Hunter's pro two-way escapades? Comment down below. Please like, share, subscribe, and click on that little bell icon so you don't miss out on future videos. Thanks and have a good one.